The night sky is absolutely incredible. You walk and you can see the Milky Way rising in April um, like a, a thunderstorm coming at you. You know, our grandfathers were able to walk outside and uh, just to be in awe. And uh, now you've got children that are born in cities that have never seen the night sky. And it's criminal to take this heritage away when all you have to do is have intelligent lighting and you can have both the night sky and good lighting. This video is sponsored by Dylan McGaster. Check out our new channel by clicking the link and be sure to subscribe. Hi, I'm Jack Newton. I'm an amateur astronomer and I'm in the Arizona Sky Village. Well, when I was grade five, my parents for Christmas had uh, bought me a small two inch refracting telescope and uh, I would take it out religiously every night and scan the skies once I got through looking through all the windows in the neighborhood. And I independently discovered Saturn and that absolutely blew my socks off. And then I kept building bigger and bigger telescopes because I couldn't afford them. I uh, had pictures published in Sky and Telescope and Astronomy Magazine. And 20 years ago, I joined a club that would take pictures of the night sky looking for supernovas. These are stars that have gone through their life cycle and the large ones have a core collapse and then a resounding huge explosion. I was able to co-discover uh, over 200 objects, which at this date, uh, made me number two in the world for amateurs. Light pollution, of course, is the nemesis. It's the washing out the night sky. And for photographers to be able to record the night sky, they need it dark. And so we took the light pollution pictures that were taken from space, and I superimposed them on our road map and drove to the darkest spots I could find. And lo and behold, that brought us to Portal, Arizona. We picked the loneliest spot with the least development so that we wouldn't have new lighting encroach on our area for many, many years. We were able to acquire several hundred acres that we could subdivide. It has maintained that darkness and created an environment for astronomers that had a dark sky site. Unfortunately, the county made us spend all of our money for the whole subdivision and just putting the roads in. So we were only able to complete the first phase, which is 35 four acre lots. The weather is great in the winter time and we have this clear, dark skies. Everybody turns their lights off, won't let light even out of their houses. They draw their, their blinds at night. You can't walk without a red flashlight. From there, of course, uh, taking astrophotography was a breeze. This is a roll-off roof observatory as opposed to a dome observatory that I basically designed myself. And you notice that uh, part of the roof is the wall because we want southern exposure because everything sort of rotates into the south as the earth turns. These are three different types of telescopes. A forked design telescope here, which is state of the art, will go to any spot in the sky in about two and a half seconds. The earth's rotating. If the telescope's not tracking, you'll end up with a blurred picture. So everybody is fighting for the best, most stable telescopes. And uh, this tracks at two tenths of an arc second, the same design as the robots are that weld cars together. They're working off of coders. And uh, that's what this particular telescope does. It's called a plane wave. This is an old workhorse I had, an ME mount, they call it, 0.4 meter telescope. I use this extensively for supernova hunting, looking for stars blowing up in distant galaxies. And for showing the public, I've got a half meter here called a Dobsonian telescope. This telescope is easy to push around. You can add a little computer to it, which I have, which allows you to point very accurately to different galaxies and nebulae and so on. A new addition to my collection because these usually have cameras on them and a nice big telescope to visually look at the sky which uh, really everybody wants to do. Behind the wall is where the computers are. All these telescopes except the Dobsonian are computer controlled and we can run them from anywhere in the world. So you can be on vacation, you can open up this observatory and you can shoot the night sky all night. 
This is my biggest telescope. We dedicated it for hunting for supernovas. So every night it would take 800 pictures of galaxies looking for a supernova going off. We would get uh, maybe eight or nine uh, a year uh, with this telescope. There's a fork mount, which means it can pick an area of the sky and sweep it all the way across without having to reconfigure itself. It weighs as much as a car. It's about uh, a ton and a half and it's a half meter telescope. It's been a great workhorse for the last 15 years. This dome is on top of our house. This is a part of the house. The purpose of a dome is to prevent wind from shaking your telescope and heavy weather, as long as it's clear, it allows you to uh, uh, maneuver the telescope into a piece of sky that uh, just won't shake compared to the roll-off roof observatory, which does poorly in windy conditions. If it's windy, there's about 80% of the sky that you can still shoot and uh, not have any problems. This 16-foot dome is homemade, half-inch plywood, and uh, the sheeting is uh, covered with fiberglass. And it's the fiberglass, like a boat, gives us its strength and it's waterproof. This particular telescope is called a, a max mount and it can hold 250 to 300 pounds of load. And there's counterweights I have on the floor here, which uh, uh, can be attached to it to counterbalance the weight of the telescope. I have a solar prominence telescope, which allows you to uh, look at the sun in hydrogen alpha light, and you can see into the lower coronasphere, and you can see prominence coming off the edge of the sun. It's a very, very specialized telescope but it allows you to see, as I say, deep into the sun. If you're looking at an eclipse of the sun, um, you would just use uh, uh, special glasses that darken it down or a number 14 welding glass to look at the sun safely. Since all my telescopes are robotic, this is uh, my office, which is also the control center for my telescopes, and I'm able to uh, um, control them from in here. I don't have to be in a harsh environment outside. And uh, uh, when I open up telescopes here, it uh, is exactly the same as if I was in Canada and wanting to open up down here. We have all sky cameras that show you what exactly what the sky is doing and what the wind is doing and so on. The telescopes shoot automatically all night. And uh, if it's too windy or whatnot, they'll automatically shut down and park themselves. So it's pretty neat stuff. The poor cities that are uh, just getting annihilated with light pollution upset the environment for the animals who, uh, who need night sky. They need to sleep at night and they hunt at night, even with your health. People need dark. People that work at night uh, end up higher preponderance of cancer and uh, other horrible things. Full cutoff lighting is very important. Keep light pointed down where you need it and not into the night sky. This is our galaxy. This is our where we live, not only the Earth. You've got nearly half a trillion stars out there. It's horrible to, to not be able to uh, uh, look up and uh, and see what uh, the rest of the universe looks like. I am single-minded, and uh, I uh, I guess I, I taken all of my uh, best attributes and focused them into astronomy. Anybody that has a passion, go for it. Move into an environment that. Uh, that will uh, expand your, whether it, uh, if it's oceanography, you want to be near an ocean, of course, and read the internet, uh, read what's coming out. I read science every morning. I look at what's been published and uh, keep up with uh, what's happening. And it is so exciting and it's moving so fast that the whole world is changing. And uh, you want to be right at the forefront of that change. Thank you for watching this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you really love what we create here at Floorb, we're working hard to bring you more, better, higher quality content. And so if you would like to support us, consider clicking the link in the description and joining the community on Patreon. And you can support the channel through that. So if you love what we do, consider checking out our Patreon page. And thank you for watching. Have a great week. Big love. Peace out.